Um, I want to thank Otis Humanities that's here. Uh, young people going to help us paint in a little bit. I want to thank the musicians from Project Step that are here today. Uh, I know they're going to perform in a little while. Thank you very much. And again, I just want to recognize one more time the elected officials, uh, Senator Will Brownsberger, who I had the honor of, of serving with in the House of Representatives. We actually shared an office. Thank you, Senator, for being here. Uh, a brand new city councilor who's literally two weeks on the job, who's hit the ground running, and that's uh, City Councilor Kim Janey, who's here. Uh, and I've seen her more this weekend than any, any, anybody else. So thank you, Kim. It's great to see you. And I'm going to see, and, and next to Kim is Armando Cavallo, who's a state representative uh, from Dorchester, and also uh, I serve with him in the House of Representatives. Incredible uh, person who does incredible work here in the city of Boston. So thank you, Representative Cavallo. I want to thank the MFA for helping make Boston a city where creati creativity thinks. And thank Citizens Bank again for making art more accessible in our city. As, as Jerry said, over 100,000 people by the end of today will have come through these halls in the time of the last several year, last 16 years, and that's incredible. And it's incredible because it's an honor, uh, and, and it's a pleasure for all of us to honor Dr. King uh, with all of you, and Citizens has done that, and the MFA has done that for a long time. Dr. King loved this city. He called this city his second home. He spent many of his formative years here within two miles of where we are right now. Think about that for a minute. Two miles from this building, most of it, mo what's happened in his life happened from here. He studied theology at Boston University. He lived in a brownstone in the South End. And he preached and met Coretta at the 12th Baptist Church. When he returned to Boston in 1965, he had a message for a crowd of 22,000 people gathered on Boston Common. His message was, the vision of the new Boston must extend into the heart of Roxbury. Boston must become a testing ground for the ideals of freedom. Dr. King knew that division was the shackle holding our city back. He believed in how much more Boston could accomplish when we broke free from the chains. He knew that the future of our city depends upon inclusion. He knew that it would depend upon us to make sure that our city's success roots in every single neighborhood. 50 years after the death of Dr. King, those words mean more now than ever. They continue to guide us in our hearts and finally with a public memorial. We believe in the power of public art. It brings us together. But most of all, it says something about who we are. Our memorial to Dr. King and Coretta Scott King will say a lot about Boston. It will honor our long march towards a more just society, the beloved community that Dr. King dreamed of. It will honor two people who pushed us forward, and it will bring the legacy of Dr. King back into the conversation about where we're headed in the city of Boston. Art unites like nothing else can. You see it right here at the MFA. You see it in amazing groups like Artists for Humanity and Project STEP. Today we begin a new work of art together. It will be a companion to the beautiful painting that's hanging in City Hall right now. I'm proud of this movement that we've started. We're focused on equity in everything that we do. We're making sure that all communities are represented in our cultural resources. We are honoring Dr. King's vision for our city, a testing ground for the ideals of freedom. Thank you, enjoy yourself, and happy Martin Luther King Day.